Good morning, folks. As you see the inner system on the JPL orbital diagram, that comet path to see 2012 S1 Ison. Today she's about dead set behind our star with the brightness blocking our view. Now, I and others made numerous requests for a flip to one of the stereo spacecraft to monitor her passing through the top of the asteroid belt while we lacked visibility. As is, however, Despite the fact that NASA did this with Elenin, which they claimed was nothing special, they are unwilling to do so with such an acclaimed intruder. Makes me want to teach them the principle of starry decisis, to stand on your decisions and honor precedent. On to the buoy from yesterday. Apparently I caught her just warming her throat because this morning we have 60 meter swings. That's nearly 200 feet up and down like before. But how do buoys, ships, and the coastline not notice a thing like that? Well, I'm beginning to guess that it's smaller underground shaking somehow causing the larger readings. These buoys make their measurements via a pressure to sea level conversion, and that can likely be amplified by such underground tremors. Shifting to Switzerland where cesium-137 is elevated in an allegedly potable water source which also happens to be the discharge location for water from the nuke plant. Does not seem smart. One storm group exits east while Perth welcomes another. And while Perth waits for the next one, the eastern cells will try to move to New Zealand. North Sea breezes should have Germany slightly cooler than they could be in the middle of summer, while Mediterranean pop-up storms are taking on Spain and surrounding areas. West coast looks relatively clear from Baja up to the Canadian border. Wind map currently showing a lot of energy heading north from the Rockies and the plains, while Texas is seeing a convergence of its own. Anyone not new here knows now that these are the locales that have the severe watch tonight. Still no gamma ray burst since the beginning of July. Unusually long drought. You might notice a bit of pickup to solar flares, and for good reason. The departing development gave us at least one flare, but that central region on the south now has a delta spot. Noah disagrees with me, but I see oppositely polarized black umbras within the same orange penumbral region less than one degree apart. That's Delta. So far, we've seen no major flaring from her, but she did pop out a noticeable CME yesterday, as is visible on the SDO AIA-193. Not large or directly headed at Earth, but indicative of her maturity as she enters center disk today. Up north, the new guys we saw yesterday are a bit more bold than I anticipated, and it certainly appears as though we have polarities trying to mix in the center of that active region, pushing Zurich F size, if not at the mark already. NOAA revised their Enlil spiral to show two density waves to the CME impact drawn out over multiple days, and lo and behold, as the elevated orange density reported yesterday continued somewhat, it was overshadowed by an even larger density wave at the end of the day. Electron flux really wants to surge, you can tell, but the protons won't let it. Pretty curves on the GOES magnetometer are now timid trembles near the baseline, and the instability mentioned yesterday kept right on going into geomagnetic storm status. Let's come back to Earth and look at earthquakes. Only a few rumbles in our usual locations while Alaska continued letting off steam throughout the day and a significant amount of pressure released near the Caribbean and Cocos Plates. At eight days below average, it is the second unusually long drought of the newscast. Corona Hole up north, I believe, could begin to directly face Earth tonight. Looks transequatorial at the backside as well. Shots of our star to close, incoming filaments, the Corona Hole and the active regions. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.